Hey guys, welcome to Live Paint Night Online. Today we're going to do this awesome beach sunset with a surfboard. It's what was voted on in the last paint night. So I'm going to give everyone a minute to tune in. And I'm also going to get the comments pulled up on my computer. As you tune in, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. And then also tell me if you're here painting along with me. I am just doing this at home. So there are cats, there are children, there are husbands. Um, the kitten is being particularly vocal right now. Say hi. It's your weekly. Say hi. Your weekly. No. She's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> she just wants to play with the tripod. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so this is just meant to be a very relaxed, uh, st hopefully stress relieving activity. Okay. So please let me know down in the comments if you are painting along. That will help me so I know kind of more the pace to keep as we go. And you guys can have... Um, just have fun with this, okay? Use any colors you want, any supplies you want. There's no like you have to use this or this or you have to do it a certain way. Feel free to make it your own creation as much as possible. This painting basically has every single color in it, uh, but you can leave out any colors as you wish. So I am using the Artist Loft, no, <laughs> oh, that was a, uh... Habit, okay, Craft Smart, <laughs> just Craft Smart paint. This is just the cheap acrylic paint from Michaels. Um, it's not very good, but it's just fine for doing these paint nights. So let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my paint. I didn't pour it earlier because it is extremely hot. Yeah, autopilot. <laughs> so, oh good, Heather, you made it. Yay, hi, I'm just Jazzy. All right, so the colors I'm pouring out here, blue, white, orange. Uh-oh, <laughs> I haven't used the orange in a while and I should have shaken it first, okay. I don't actually have brown with me. I forgot about brown. So we're gonna have to just make that work. Oh, and there's no red in here per se. Also, maybe my daughter has some brown paint. Okay. Um, the purple that I'm using is called African Violet, and it's more of the red purple. So it's a really good one. Which you can just use regular purple. Just use a dark orange. Yeah. You can use anything to substitute. Um, and this purple does have kind of brownish qualities to it as well. So that could definitely work. Hey, Laura. Hey, Karen. Bon noche. Bon, no, co uh, combi, right? I think, I don't know. Last year I went to Aruba and Curacao and Italy and France. <laughs> like I got my languages, just all kinds of confused. <laughs> so let me know guys in the comments who is painting along. Please let me know. That really helps. Hey Diana and Dina. Welcome. All right. And I'm going to go over the brushes in just a second. Okay. I'll pour out some black later. So as usual, I'm using a one inch foam brush. And then a medium flat brush. This one I think is a half an inch. I usually use either a third or half an inch. And then just a little detail brush. I don't know if this is a size zero or what. For this painting, because we do have, if you look, it's cool, warm, cool, warm. I recommend using two different foam brushes if you have them. Or if you just have one, then just use two, use the sides carefully. Uh, because you can't really wash these things out. If you're just using a regular brush, then just wash it out in between colors, okay? All right, let's get started. 
So Heather painting, and I know Veronica's painting. Who else? Anyone else painting for now? I always forget my cup of water. Okay, Jazzy's painting. Great. Okay. So let's get started with the blue up here. So if you've been doing skies with me recently, this sky should be hopefully relatively easy. So we're going to take the blue down about, I'd say that's about five inches. And with the blue, I'm adding in some white. And this not only makes it a lighter blue, but also gives us different tones in the blue. I am using a 16 by 20 canvas. So obviously I just said like five inches. If you're using a smaller canvas, then you need to adjust your sizes, okay? And it doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Oh good, Sophie's painting. Okay. Yeah, and then I know people are just watching as well. Um, and then you can, of course, watch it later. And you can paint now and do it again later if you want. You know, get yourself some practice. Okay. So there we have the first part of our sky. And now either switch brushes or use the other side if you only have one brush. Or if you're using a regular brush, not a foam brush, go ahead and rinse it out. We're going to go on to the next layer here, which um, is going to be the orange and yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and put orange here. This is that Craftsmart orange. Nice and bright. Look at that. And then go in there with some yellow. And this you're going to take down to just less than halfway. As you can see on this, the sky is actually a bit muted. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and throw some white in there. And that will help mute it a little bit and also help blend the colors so that we don't just have stripes. Okay. You can go more or less yellow or orange if you want. And now I'm going to do the same thing up here with white to kind of bring those lines together. So yellow or uh, orange and blue generally make kind of a brownish color. <laughs> but if you do it with the white, it works out. See that? Not so bad. Um, Diana, I really, are you talking about painting like this for beginners because these are all for beginners like these are meant to be done even if you've never painted before and good news is for you is that we can't see you so even if you feel like you do a horrible job we won't see it we'll all just assume you did great yeah so hey jude is back welcome all right now here this is the purple so I'm going to go in here with a little more white again. I haven't washed this brush or anything. And then I'm going to get in there with my purple. And at this stage, I am just over halfway down. You can go even further if you want, like if you want to have more sky. And I'm overlapping this a little bit. And go in here with just a little more white. I like this purple a lot. So there we go. Not too shabby, not too shabby. I have not done this painting in like a couple years. So I'm trying to remember the exact sequences and everything that I've done before. And hopefully I don't totally Mix it up. <laughs> I got my iced coffee because it's about 600 degrees here. Let me know down in the comments, guys, how everyone is doing. How is your week going so far? It's only Tuesday or it's already Tuesday or what day is it? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Okay. For those painting, 
Let me know also where you're at. If you're at this step, or if you need a little more time, so you need to say, I'm there, or more time. Jude's week is very boring. I understand. You're there, okay? Good, good. Veronica, how are you doing? <laughs> Okay, she's doing good. Okay, good. Excellent. So who has been with me in the previous weeks where we did some of the clouds? Because we're going to add some clouds real quick here with this same warm brush that we were just using. I'm going to just not washing off this brush, add a little bit of white. Veronica, even if your sky went down further than you wanted to, it's okay because when you go and do the water, you can bring it the water up a little bit higher. So still not the end of the world. All right, so with the same brush, I am adding a little bit of white onto my brush. And for those who've been here, just remember, we're gonna add a few clouds in here and there we're gonna go kind of linear and then bring it up a little bit. So these are not going to be just plain white clouds because we've already got some color in our brush. They're going to be warmer clouds. So just imagine, you know, it's a sunset. You can add other colors into your clouds if you want to. So if you want to throw some yellow in there, go for it. I think for now I'm going to just stick to white and see how that looks. We don't want to spend all day on the clouds. This is not like a super cloudy sky. You notice there's only just a few clouds in there. And it looks like I did those ones with orange. These I'm just going to do with some white. So this, add as many or as few clouds as you want. We're definitely not spending all day on the clouds here. This is not a huge part of the painting. I'm going to throw a little one in over here. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Don't want to overdo it too much. Yes, Jazzy, I definitely remember you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Yolanda. Okay, good. So, we're going to go ahead and go on to the water. So go ahead and switch back to your cold color brush or rinse your brush if you're using just the same one. And um, we're going to go ahead with the blue and overlap the line here. You can use your brush to clear, delineate a line for your water. See, I think mine's actually a little bit higher than I want, but that's okay. No worries. We make it work. Okay. The water, we want to take down about another, let's say divide however much remaining canvas you have in about half. So this is going to be sand. This is going to be water. This water, we're going to do blue, purple, and white though you can add in any colors as you want. So I like to do this pretty fast because the acrylic paint dries really fast. And by going back and forth with the different colors, you can get to where it looks like it has different light on it. Does everybody see that? And I just did that one side. I'm gonna go over here. Go in with some white. You can have your water be more on the blue side, more on the purple side, or more wherever, yellow, green, whatever. I love this purple, so I'm definitely getting that in there. And I am just lightly going back and forth, creating streaks as opposed to ribbons, right? I don't want like stripes, okay guys? Um, I'm going to do a little more purple up here at the top. I 
And we definitely, you need to make sure your sky and your water are not the same. So make sure this water should be darker out here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go back to a little more blue, just to really clearly delineate there. Okay, go as streaky and wild and crazy as you would like. And basically just keep working it until you're happy with it. I am going to add extra white here in the middle because we're going to have our sun there. But this is not where we're doing this lighting, okay? And we're not doing any waves yet. So don't worry about that. Also, just as a quick note, the more you go over it, the more you will continue to blend it. So if you want it less blended, don't go over it quite as much. Like I've already probably gone over it a little much, but that's okay. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Oops. I'm sorry, I'm just not looking at the comments for just a second. Intense concentration here. Okay, I think that's good for now. Like I said, add in any colors that you want. If you want to add in yellow, like over here, it looks like I went a little crazy. There's definitely some yellow and other colors in there. So. Um... All right, Heather, would you suggest wetting it? I would not because it holds on to so much water. So I personally wouldn't. Okay, for those painting along, let me know where you're at. If you're at this section or not. You're there, okay. Once again, we don't want to overwork the water too much. I probably already did, but that's okay. Heather's there. Okay. Remember also, you're going to have rocks in here covering up a lot of your water. So, Okay, good. We're going to move on to the next step, the sand. So go back to your warm brush, all right? And we're going to start with adding yellow down here. Now I have, I splattered a little bit of blue, just in case anyone's wondering what that is. But I do have um, the orange in here as well. So I'm not just getting a straight yellow, which is probably gonna help me seeing as I don't have brown. And I think because I don't have brown, I'm gonna add a little bit of my purple in here. But if you have brown, add a little bit of it in here. We're going to streak it across the whole thing, and then we're going to give it this kind of more sand texture, okay? You can also add a little bit of white. Sand is not super yellow. It is more on the white side, or like a really light tan. And then of course, where the water hits it, it does get a bit darker. So if you are gonna make any part darker, it should be probably close to where the water is. But I'm gonna leave it really simple like that. And then here's what I like to do because right now this doesn't really look like sand. It's sort of semi the color of sand, but I like to actually go through and pat it like this. Now this is definitely an arm workout but it gives you that texture and you can add a little more color in as you pat it, like a little more white or yellow or whatever, brown. Whoa. -oh. <laughs> I have it just sitting up on my easel. You can also flip it around to make it easier. But anyways, this is how I get kind of more of that textured look is I pat it as I go. Throwing a little more yellow in here. 
Definitely don't overdo it on any one particular color. Keep it pretty subtle. And it is okay if there's a little bit of your white canvas showing through here because we're gonna go over that with the uh, waves. Waves are gonna crash over it and it's gonna be totally fine. I definitely like the look of it with brown, but this is okay. Okay, good. All right. There we go, we got our texture. I know, I definitely need more arm workouts. <laughs> this is a lighter sand. All beaches have different sand anyways. So it's just, could be a different beach. Some beaches have black sand if you want. Yeah, I like the light sand too. I think it's more realistic than this one actually. But like I said, different sands, so. All right, so for those painting along, let me know if you're there with me. You like the darker one? Understood. I do like the darker edge on this one, but yeah. Yeah, there are beaches with black sand. Okay, sweet. So we're gonna go on to the waves here and um, adding in this white. Actually, real quick, let's go ahead and add in our sun just so you can get more of a better idea of where the lighting should go. So I'm just gonna use my little detail brush. And in this one, I have white, like it's just totally white. I think in this one, I'm gonna add yellow but you know, do it however you want. And this is on the smaller side. So of course, start very small. You can make it bigger, you can't really make it smaller. Whoop. Put it down. Um, make it as big or as small as you want. And make it as high or as low as you want, but remember it's a sunset, so don't put it way up here, ideally. This one's obviously lower than that one, but that's okay. All right, I think that's pretty good for that. Uh, it's a little yellower than I wanted. I'm gonna throw a little more white in it. All right, I feel like that's decent. Okay, good. Suzanne said, I went to a black sand beach and it was extremely hot and burned my feet. I can imagine. That's funny, on the screen, these look like the same color, <laughs> but they're not. Okay, so moving right along. Go ahead and grab your flat brush and a little bit of white. And we're gonna start first by just adding in some lighting under our sun here. So for this, you're gonna just go back and forth. You do not wanna create a tornado, but you're gonna just do some light lines. Um, and you can add yellow in too. I might add some yellow in in a second, but I'm just starting with white. I like to try to go right up to the line there, but don't go over it. <laughs> Some lines should be longer. Ooh, maybe not that long. <laughs> That's okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a little bit of yellow as well, cause I feel like it. And there are no rules. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. As she continues to work on it. <laughs> All right, my line is a little, it slants down this way. That's okay. All 
All right, now for our crashing waves here. We keep this really simple. I don't know if you guys remember the whole stippling process, but basically you're gonna kind of shove your brush down so that the bristles separate like this. Okay, and then we're going to just stipple down here with just white. And sometimes you might have to do more than one layer of this, which is why we kind of do it now, and then we'll come back and add some more. So you're going right along this line here. And you can get as creative with it as you want, have it come out of it. Keep it relatively thin though, guys, because we are looking at this from a distance. So it's not the big crashing waves as if, as if we were standing right next to it. Get this little character down here. Okay, so there's one. Now I like to go above it a little bit and do basically the same thing close by, but on the second one, I'm gonna not go all the way across the canvas. I'm gonna go, you know, maybe halfway or so. And it's gonna be a little bit thinner. And it can even kind of bleed into that first one if you want. And then I think um, I'll do, you can do as many as you want. I'm gonna do one that kind of starts in the middle over here and kind of goes to the other side. Keep it simple, do not overcomplicate it. Okay. So something like that. <laughs> Heather said she started to do the Bob Ross swish swish sounds. Absolutely. I totally do that in my head too. And we will be painting a happy little tree in a minute. So remember, we can go back, come back to this. So if it's not as white as you would like, because maybe you had other colors on your brush or your background wasn't quite dry or whatever reason, um, we, we have a chance to come back and put another layer of white on it, which I know I'm probably gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna leave that for now. And we're gonna go on to our rocks, all right? Let me know down in the comments, those painting along with me, where you're at. Are you here? Are you there? Are you everywhere? Make some black paint. Okay. Oh yeah, also guys, don't forget, I almost forgot, but um, for those watching along in, in real time, feel free to uh, super chat or um, super sticker donate or really, really, really helps me continue these paint nights. And then um, also there's a PayPal donate link in the description for anyone watching now or later, you can always do that as well. It's always much, much appreciated. <laughs> okay. So I'll give you guys another minute. Hey, Linda. Give you guys another minute to get caught up. I think Veronica needs a little more time. Yeah, so I do understand that not everybody has money, but if you are able to super chat or PayPal donate. It's all appreciated. I just wanted to do a little more on that line there. Okay, <laughs> gotta leave it alone. All right. So we're gonna go on to the rocks, Veronica. I hope you're here. So these are simple. And once again, if you've been painting with me in the last few weeks, same kind of technique. I kind of use the same techniques over and over in different settings. So with your medium flat brush and then just some black, start just above your waterline over here on the left. 
and you're going to just really, really jaggedy, raggedy, take it out a few inches. Start small, you can take it out further, you can't take it out less, okay? So just go as raggedy and jaggedy as you can, because these are rock formations, you guys. So if you've ever walked on rocks at the beach, they are not generally smooth, at least not the ones in California. <laughs> or many of the beaches I've been to. Then we'll go ahead and fill this in. And the bottom doesn't have to be perfect either. It shouldn't be really, because rocks can go out into the ocean and whatever. So that can be a bit jaggedy as well. You can, if you want to get real creative, you can put some rocks that come out into the water. Totally up to you. I've had some really creative people in my classes do all these different things. Okay, same thing on the left side, or on the right side rather, sorry. But I have that one go up a little bit higher. So starting maybe an inch, inch and a half above your water line. This one's a little bit bigger. Okay. Fill it in and then adjust as you wish. That one's kind of a steep cliff. Uh, thank you so much, Suzanne. You're awesome. Really appreciate it. And guys, don't forget Mother's Day is this Sunday. I hope you all have gifts. If not, check out my Etsy store or just, you know, follow a tutorial and paint your mama something. Paint her something nice. Either way, she'll appreciate it. Okay. There we go. Feel pretty confident on that. I think it looks good. I'm going to grab some, a cup of water brush because I always forget. I be right back. Behave. Okay, I have returned. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, this one looks fairly complicated, but it's actually, I think, generally on the easier side, personally. So at this stage, if you want to add more to your waves, this is kind of your last chance to do it. that said I like it just the way it is now you can always stop at any point you do not have to add any of the things so if you're like oh this is a beautiful beach leave it at that okay we're gonna add a palm tree and a surfboard though so I'm gonna do just a little more on my waves not much but I just want to get a little more stark white in some points But definitely don't overdo it. I'm telling myself that as much as you guys. <laughs> okay. It's crashing. You can put a whole sand castle in there if you want. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. 
And I know the tree can seem daunting, but it's actually not super difficult. And I'm pretty sure we all wish we were quarantined on this beach right now. <laughs> it is a very nice beach. All right, for those painting along, please let me know where you're at. Are you ready to go on to the tree? Veronica, tune in. Heather, you're there, okay. Good, good. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and go onto the tree. So this tree starts off the canvas on the bottom. I like to avoid these rocks and avoid the sun. So I have it kind of come up and curve in between those, okay? And don't make it too much higher than, I don't know, maybe around here, because once we add the uh, palm fronds, it'll be a little bigger. But also don't make it too low because you don't want to interfere with the rest of your stuff. We want to have everything separate. So if you have brown, which I don't, use that now. I'm going to use black because that's what I've got. And your medium flat brush. Okay. So kind of judge how you're gonna go in here. And I'm using just the thin side of my brush. And there we go, we're starting with just a line. I hope that everyone can just make the line. I think I added a little, it was a little too much of a crook <laughs> in that. So I think this one will come out a little bit better. And then you wanna just slowly thicken that line. Take your time. This is kind of an important point where if you do too much or too fast, you end up with a really fat palm tree and that just seems weird because palm trees are not fat. So take your time, slowly thicken it up until, well, depending on the size of your palm tree, of course, if you're using a smaller canvas, but we want it to end up being maybe about a half inch thick. And we want it to be a little bit thicker on the bottom and then thin out at the top, okay? And if you're having trouble getting a thin or a smooth line, add a little bit of water to your paint. That can help you to get smoother lines. Keep it simple. Okay, now one thing we do with this also is we're gonna lighten up the right side. So remember we've got the sun coming in there. So I am going to add first a little bit of yellow just to that right side. Because I'm using black, it's gonna blend in more than if you're using the brown. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And that just gives it a little more depth. So it's not just like this flat color on there. And if you want, which I did on the textured thing as well, by doing a whole kind of stippling, just be careful when you do this, not to go too far outside your lines. You still wanna keep it inside your lines as much as possible. But that can also give your tree a little bit more life. Your happy little tree. And if you add too much light, you can always go back in and add a little more dark. That's okay. I'm throwing in a little more yellow over here just because I'm using the black, so I've got a lot of gray. 
I'm throwing in just a little more yellow. Tree some character. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, you guys ready to go on to the palm fronds? green is so I'm gonna use blue and yellow I guess whoopsies <laughs> you're as ready as you are let ever be perfect okay all right I'm just mixing up some of my yellow and blue this painting literally has like all the colors in the world okay so I'm using my little detail brush I feel like I did a palm tree in an earlier video but I'm not totally sure anyways I'm gonna actually start with black now don't worry black is kind of gonna be the underwear <laughs> and that's just to give it the darker tones that are gonna be underneath and it'll also be good because it'll give you a little practice with doing it before you do the actual palm fronds so I'm gonna tell you what not to do first on this going over some of the mistakes that I have seen people do. So let's say here's your tree, okay? First mistake, do not do this. We're not making a firework, okay? Um, the other thing to not do, just ignore this, this is my mountains, is, let's say this is your trunk, we're not making a spider, okay? So the other thing I see people do is equal lines, okay? That, my friends, is a spider, not a palm tree. <laughs> All right, so those are your two things not to do. That being said, what do we do? <laughs> All right, first of all, you're gonna have different lengths. So the ones underneath are gonna be a little bit shorter. You're gonna go up, and then curve it down up and curve it down all right you can even add more later then above that once again up and curve it down these ones I'm gonna do a little bit longer curve it down now those have too much of a curve I'll probably add some little ones that come in here okay and then I'm gonna make some that are a little bit shorter up here up curve up curve and then one maybe an even shorter one in here like that okay this is just the general lines just to give you the idea though that you don't want the firework or the spider please okay now to make these into actual palm fronds we're going to go ahead and feather them out okay so we've got our basic lines here and remember, this is underneath. So even if you kind of mess this up, don't stress about it, okay? So we're gonna feather them out. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. So please hold, I'm gonna go as smooth as I can. Okay, even mine looks a little bit messy. I don't think I've ever done it that slow, but that's okay. So you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna go on the bottom of one of your lines and just start adding diagonal lines like it's a feather okay and these once again are kind of just sloppy the neater you do it the worse it will look <laughs> there's a spider on your painting all right and then you can do it on the top as well but it actually looks fine if you just do it on the bottom only but let's go ahead and I'm going to do this on the top. Let's really fill this in. 
Okay, so there is one. Yep, still black. We're doing all this. This is your practice round. Go ahead and fill all of those in with the feathering. And this will also show you if you kind of need to add another palm frond or two in. Okay. The ones on the bottom here that are going to be kind of a little more underneath, you can definitely do less feathering on those, maybe even just on one side. Don't stress about it too much. Okay. <laughs> so keep going, keep going. Let me know in the chat box if you guys have any questions. I try to make it as clear as possible and just, you know, use what I've observed people doing wrong to help you guys. Because some things I kind of take for granted that people would just know when they don't. And yeah, not everybody has palm trees. But believe it or not, palm trees are also not native to California. They were imported here. I believe it was in the 30s, around like 1931 or 33, I want to say. Um, actually to give people jobs. And um, yeah, so they were imported here and then People got a bunch of jobs planting them along our streets. And now California is just known for them. I have done way too much research on palm trees. <laughs> Instantly forgets what a feather looks like. I know, right? All right, a little bit more. So you can see it kind of starting to come along as we fill in all our feathering. And do a little bit more down here. I think that's pretty good. Beth, are you saying hi or do you have a question? <laughs> or are you saying me? <laughs> Not too shabby. Oh, thank you so much, Tammy. I try, I try. <laughs> yeah. It does take a lot of practice to not put your hand in the paint and smear it across the canvas. This is one of my greatest skills in life. Okay, so those painting along, please let me know in the comments where you're at. How's your tree looking? Do you have a firework or a spider? Your top ones are too close. Okay. That's okay. We are going over it with the green. So, and you don't have to feather all of them. Like that's just to kind of fill it in, but if it's already filled in, you just leave it. And see, like actually looking, like if I take a step back, I feel like these ones are a little bit short. But when I go in there with the green, I can extend them and fix it up. But doing it this way, adding the black first, really gives it, A, it gives it depth, and B, it, um, it gives you some practice before you do the green. 
And yeah, Jazzy, you can absolutely leave it at this stage as well. If you like the black and you're like, I don't want to mess it up, it's perfect, leave it there, <laughs> you know? And silhouette, silhouettes are always great too. Okay, so if you want to, we're going to go ahead and go on with green on there. If your black is too wet, give it a minute. But you're going to do literally the exact same thing over it, but now with green. And like I said, I'm going to extend some of these. So I'm just putting in the lines there. My black is still fairly wet. I might have to wait myself. But at least you guys can get an idea here. And if you don't care if your black's wet, just keep going anyways. And that will, it'll just be a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm just filling it in with green. It's not gonna be as green as that other one because A, my black is <laughs> pretty wet and B, I am using a different green because I had to mix yellow and blue. But that's okay. So you're going over it again. Now that hopefully you've had your practice. So intense concentration here. And this is your your time also if you want to make them a little bit bigger. If you want to add in more, go ahead. I'd say just relax with it. Don't stress. I know that's sometimes easier said than done. And then there is one more step on the palm tree. I think that's pretty good, actually. Boom. I'm proud of myself. Okay. Um, which is to take either white or yellow. I think in this case, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. And we're going to just add a little bit of lighting on the palm fronds on the right hand side. So where the sun would be hitting it more. This is definitely not like a full on class in lighting, <laughs> but just giving you some little tips. So just on the right side here, same thing, go over with a little bit of either yellow or white. I think the yellow does look better than the white. just like you did with the green. And that just gives it a little more, once again, a little more character and a little more depth. There we go. Boom. We're going to leave it at that. Not gonna make it any more complicated. Okay. So for those painting along, let me know down in the chat box where you're at with your palm tree. Are you done? Do you need more time? Are you crying and need a hug? Just kidding. I hope nobody is crying <laughs> and I can't give you a hug right now. So, okay. Veronica needs a little more time. No problem. Okay, and for those uh, just tuning in more recently, we are doing one of these a week. Currently, I'm doing Tuesdays. Paint. <laughs> Sherry said, can you paint me laying on the beach with a margarita? Absolutely. I just have to do it after the video. <laughs> um, so I've been doing Tuesdays, and it's been working out well. I think Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and if you are enjoying this, you can always watch it later, of course, and you can, you know, pause and rewind and whatever there too. And um, always, always, if you can, please consider donating a tip 
into either the PayPal or if you're watching it live, I have the Super Chat Super Sticker. Yeah. Tammy said, there's no crying in painting, only happy accidents. I 100% agree. <laughs> hey, CJ Phoenix Dragon. Thank you so much. I got your email last night. Sorry, I fell asleep. I meant to answer, but I fell asleep. <laughs> but I do appreciate it. All right. Give you guys another minute or so on your palm fronds. And then we're going to just add a surfboard. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit again. Real quick. And I'm also going to point this down a little bit. And going as smoothly as possible. Okay. All right, you're calling it done. That works for me. Okay. So if you have any idea of like perspective, um, I'm not the best at it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so this surfboard is probably a little bit too big, to be honest. Um, so, but whatever, you know, who's judging, I guess. So we're going to add our surfboard in here if you want, you don't have to, and it can be any color you want. And this part, I like to kind of have fun and do some different designs. For some reason, I chose orange on that one. For this one, I'll go ahead and I'll do blue. So we're going to have it leaning against the palm tree and we only want it to be like maybe two to three inches. Like I said, I made that one a little bit big, I guess, but maybe we're just standing close to the palm tree. So we're doing an almond shape. Probably better with the medium brush actually, but with rounded edges. Okay. Wow, this is not coming out to be the shape that I want it to be. And it's just going to go to the bottom here. Go back to my small brush. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to actually make this into a bit of a lighter blue. No, no. Okay. I'm going to keep it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just, I like, I added stripes on that one. I'm going to do that again. Keep it simple, but you can go as crazy on your surfboard as you want. I've added like Hawaiian flowers before and all kinds of things. And then same thing. If you want to do shading here as well, I have two recommendations. One is to add just a little shading on the tree underneath it. Because obviously if it's leaning against the tree, it's going to be some shadow there. And then your light source is coming from here. So technically your shading would be down here. We have it coming off the canvas kind of. So you don't really have that much room for shading. But if you want, you can add a little bit down here near the ground. Totally optional. I usually don't do that. I keep it, like I said, really simple. And that's kind of an added extra step that you really don't need, in my opinion. So, but anyways, if you want, that's just another option. You can also add some shading on the left side of the board here. by just adding a little darkness to whatever color you're using. And the end. <laughs> Don't forget to sign your picture. I'll go ahead and put my initials over here. And we're done. Boom. Yay. <laughs> okay, let's see. So I saw Ashley had a pouring question. In one of your videos, you said to use one ounce of Floetrol and half an ounce of paint and then add water for consistency. 
but the paint will still mix the same if I do the same ratio, but with more. Yes, you always keep the same ratios. Um, I actually do, so I do two thirds Floetrol to one third paint, basically no fail. And then I will add in the water to consistency. So if you're mixing 10 ounces of paint, you're probably gonna end up with about five ounces of Floetrol, or yeah, five ounces of Floetrol, three ounces of paint and two ounces of water if you're using a heavier body paint. So yeah. Oh, my devil kitten. All right. Now, do you want to come say hi? Want to say hi? You say hi? You want to go to the beach? <laughs> she just jumped up on my table on my paintings. You're such a silly kitty. <laughs> All right. Go cause trouble somewhere else. Yes, and I do have a book. It's actually in the description, the paint pouring workshop. So check that out. And then for those who would like to know the painting we're gonna do next time, let me grab it. It is this awesome, very colorful spring flower one. I was voting to do that one today, but y'all wanted to do the beach. So <laughs> we'll do this one next time. Um, I was kind of tempted to do this one before Mother's Day too. I really like it. Last year I did it with um, a group of ladies at a church and they did a Mother's Day tea party. It was the coolest thing whatsoever. Um, but I just don't think I can get that in before Mother's Day. So we'll see. Keep your eyes and ears out for um, the next one. As of right now, it will be next Tuesday, okay guys? But if I can fit it in before then, I will. I'm just trying not to like stress myself out too much, if you know what I mean, guys. And I would like to enjoy Mother's Day if possible. <laughs> but we'll see, we shall see. And yeah, for I do have uh, every Wednesday also live live video on my channel at 6 p.m. Pacific. That won't be a paint night though. We'll be doing, I have no idea what, but something else. So stay tuned at least for next Tuesday for that one, but I'll see if I can fit it in earlier before Mother's Day, okay guys? Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you had a fantastic time and I will see you all later.